Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ and today I wanted to talk about subscription addictions. And by subscription addiction, I'm referring to subscription services and products that also have subscriptions. Now companies that provide subscriptions for their services and products, they typically tend to do better financially than what they did prior to having those subscriptions. And one of the reasons is because customers are consistently providing them with revenue. And because it's a subscription, you're getting recurring revenue every week or every month or every year, depending on how the subscription is set up. And the best thing about it for businesses is that the customer doesn't even have to use your product. Once they're signed up for the subscription, they're paying until they decide that they're not gonna pay anymore. And they actually take action to cancel that subscription. And so that's where the downside comes to the actual user. If you're not actually using that product or that service on a regular basis and is not providing value to you, then you will be getting charged for that no matter what. The company's not gonna give you a call and say, hey, are you still using our service? I see you haven't used it in 48 hours. Make sure you use it. No, they don't care as much. Of course, they would love for you to continuously use their product. And especially if it's providing value to you and you're talking about it with your friends and your family or your coworkers, and you're spreading that out to other people as well, they would love that. But if you happen to not use their service for a year or two or five years, as long as you're still paying, they don't really care. And this is why it's great for businesses as far as their revenue. But for you, for your personal finance, this could be something that could be very detrimental. If you sign up for a lot of different subscription services or products that have subscriptions and you're not really using them or you're not really paying attention to how many that you're using, these things can really add up over the long term. And some of the subscriptions may only be five or $10 a month, but when you're paying $60 or $120 a year, and maybe you have five to 10 of these different services, and because in most cases, you're automatically paying this every month or every year, and you may not even notice it if you're not really tracking it. And so if you look at companies that provide subscriptions, I'm gonna name off a list of different companies that have subscriptions that are very popular. So when you look at Netflix, Adobe, Apple, Weight Watchers, Amazon, Costco, Walmart, Shopify, even EA Sports, Microsoft with their Office products, Google has subscriptions, Disney with Disney Plus, Roku, Workday, Salesforce. And then if you think about it, with your cell phone company, that's essentially a subscription as well. You have service with that phone company every month where you get access to talk, text, and also use the internet. You pay that every month and while this is a product that you probably actually are using on a regular basis, this is something that you're gonna pay every month, almost with no change over many, many years. And so this is very valuable for those companies and it can be very valuable for you as well if you use them properly and if you keep proper track of the subscriptions and the services that you sign up for. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think subscriptions as a whole are wrong or that they're bad, but I think there's two big distinctions, at least for me, between services that are subscriptions and products that are subscriptions. And so I'll give a few examples. If you love music and you'd like to buy albums back in the day, maybe way back in the day you were buying actual vinyl albums, or maybe you switched to tapes and then you moved along to CDs. And then even after CDs, you had digital downloads through Amazon or through iTunes with Apple. And now if you were a huge lover of music, maybe you bought an album every month. And let's say on average, that album was $10. If you were buying an album every month, that would be $120 spent over the course of a year. Now with services like Apple Music, you can also pay $10 per month, but you're not only getting just one album, you're getting access to millions, if not billions of different songs, hundreds of thousands of artists, different albums, Albums, you have access to all of that for just $10 per month. And so in order to listen to 10 albums or to get even just two brand new albums every month, that would then double the cost that you're paying for your $10 album to $240 per year. And so if you were a person that listened to a lot of music, then getting Apple Music or another music subscription where you're paying just $10 per month, that provided a lot of value to you. That could significantly decrease the cost of you, one, listening to music, getting new music, or even listening to new albums. 
And it's even better if, let's say you buy an album that you don't really like, you don't really have the option to return it. Once you open that CD, you can't return the CD because you could easily copy that music and then return the CD, which is why they don't accept returns. And so if you happen to buy an album and then after listening to it, you actually didn't like it, you're kind of stuck with it. But if you had a music subscription where you can listen to all of the new music that you want and you don't have to necessarily download any of that music, then it's great because you can listen to whatever you want and then you can just download or save the specific songs or the specific albums that you really like. And even if you weren't buying whole albums, if you're buying individual songs like on iTunes or what's now called Apple Music, one song was 99 cents. And so if you were to buy just 10 singles every month, that would bring you up to the cost of purchasing one whole album. Now the good thing is maybe you already listened to those songs and you're only buying the songs that you really like, but if you like more than 10 songs every month, or there are old songs that you wanna download that maybe you didn't have access to in the past, now you have to spend another dollar for all of that. And so this is an example of where a subscription service may actually be cheaper for you while also providing you more value. And companies love it as well because they're getting a consistent $10 per month from you no matter what with Apple Music, for instance. Whereas maybe maybe there wasn't a new album that came out the next month that you wanted to buy and so you didn't spend $10 that month. You're gonna wait maybe another two or three months before a different artist comes out with an album that you really like. And so those companies or those individuals who are selling the album, they would have missed out on that money. Apple would have missed out on that money because you're not downloading or buying that album via iTunes. So by giving you access to more music for a lower cost per month, that allows you access to that music which provides more value to you and that way you're more likely to continue to use that service for months if not years down the road. And that provides consistent money to Apple this is another reason why Apple is such a great company as far as when you look at the investment side of actually investing in a company like Apple or Google or Amazon or any of these large companies that also have subscription services that people really love. And so as another example, I'll use Microsoft. Many of you use Microsoft Office products, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, but back in the day prior to 2013, if you wanted to buy the new Microsoft Word or the new Microsoft Office Home and Student, for instance, then you would pay about one to $200. Currently, the Microsoft Office Home and Student, which includes Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, is $149 if you were to buy just the download or buy the CD to have those three products. And now while you'll have those three products for as long as Microsoft decides that they're gonna support Microsoft Office 2019, then you'll have access to that product and you'll be able to use it with all of the updates and all of the security updates and things of that nature that Microsoft makes as long as they continue to support 2019 version of Microsoft Office. However, over the past history of Microsoft, you see that every about two to three years, they update Microsoft Office to a new year version that also added new features. And so if you look back over just the past 25 years, starting with Microsoft Office back in 1995, up until 2020 now, they've had 14 different Office products. So that's about one product every two years. And so your $100 or $150 now product would last for about two years before there was a new product out that you could actually purchase. Now, while they may have had a new product with new features come out in two years, the product that you bought two years ago is still useful and you can still use it. And typically they will last five, if not maybe even 10 years before they completely stop supporting that product. And so if Microsoft had the option of making only $150 over a two to five or maybe even a 10 year period just from one customer versus having a product where you charge them $10 per month and over the course of a year, you would only make $120, but the next year you make another $120, five years later, you're still making money off of that one customer. And so that's why it's a great product, not only for Microsoft because they're getting consistent money from their users, but also for you because if you were to continuously upgrade every time there's a new Microsoft product, then you have to spend $150 every year or every two years, depending on how often Microsoft decides to spread out their updated version of Microsoft Word. And so I'll give two specific examples. Like I mentioned, Microsoft was one of the companies that switched to a subscription service back in 2013. Another company that switched to a subscription service was Adobe. 
Now I'm gonna show an example of both Adobe and Microsoft. When you look at the price chart for their both of their stocks, going back the past seven years from 2020 to 2013, and I also show their charts from 2006 up to 2013 so that you can see the difference in the price movements of their stock based on the seven years prior to them having a subscription service and then the past seven years where they've had their subscription service. And you can see the major difference in the value of their company and how I believe the big change from having that subscription service made a huge difference in the value of their company as a whole. And so when you look at Adobe's price, I have a chart up right now. You can see that from 2006 to about 2013, that seven year period, there wasn't much of a change when you look at the beginning stock price to the end stock price from 2006 to 2013, there's not much of a change. There isn't this consistent pattern where you can see that the price of stock is going up and to the right. But when you look at 2013 to 2020, you can see that Adobe's value has consistently gone up over this seven year period. And now when you look at Microsoft's chart as well, you see a very similar pattern from 2006 to 2013. Not much of a change from the beginning of 2006 to the beginning of 2013. But when you look at the beginning of 2013, up until now in 2020, you see that there has been a consistent rise in their stock price and in the value of their company as a whole. And while those companies provide multiple products, some of which aren't subscriptions, we know that the products that they do have subscriptions for, those are major parts of their business. And this is why there has been a consistent rise in the value of their business. And so looking at subscription services that you use and that you know that friends and family and coworkers use on a consistent basis, this may be a great way to look at individual companies to invest in, especially if they're products that you know you love or that you know you need on a daily basis if you happen to work in an office or whatever you do for a living, if there are products that you consistently use on a regular basis and they have subscriptions for them and you know that lots of people use them, then that may be a great company to invest in. But then when you look at product subscriptions, to me, that's a totally different beast. Now there are products like delivery services for food that are very helpful, especially in this time period during the coronavirus pandemic, having a subscription service where you can actually have food delivered to you, whether it's a meal kit or just having food directly shipped to you. If you have a subscription service like that, I can definitely see how a product subscription can be of value to you. But there are other products like perfume subscriptions or subscription boxes where you get random products. To me, they're not as valuable. And when you look at some of these companies, if you look at a company like Blue Apron, if you look at their stock chart, it's actually not doing that great. And now of course, Blue Apron has a lot of competitors and one of their biggest competitors is actually Amazon. And so when you're competing with a company like that, then it's very hard for your company to perform very well when a billion or I'm, I'm sorry, a trillion dollar company is competing against you. And that's not even one of the biggest parts of Amazon's business. But one of the biggest parts of Amazon's subscription services is Amazon Prime, where you're getting that two-day shipping and you're also getting multiple other services that are included in that subscription. But you can literally now get just about anything as a subscription. And so one of the craziest thing I found when I was just Googling weird subscription services, which is one for what maybe pet owners might actually found valuable, I think it's pretty crazy. But there is a subscription service where you can buy a piece of grass. Essentially, you can buy what is also called sod, a rectangle shape of grass, and you can have this delivered to you each month or each week or every couple of weeks. And with this piece of grass, you can actually have your dog poop on the grass as an economically friendly way for your dog to poop instead of buying like those dog pads or maybe newspaper or some other product that's not renewable, you can buy just a big block of grass and have your dog poop on it. And so if you don't have a backyard or if you don't have a dog park near you, or if you don't have a neighbor's grass that you can let your dog poop on, if you live in a big condo high rise where you have to go down 30 or 40 different levels just to get to the ground level, then maybe this is something great for you. You can have your dog poop in your house, but they're pooping on a block of grass, something that's more natural to them, and maybe it makes them feel better. To me, I think that is one of the craziest subscriptions ever, and the fact that people are actually buying that is really crazy to me, but maybe, maybe you'll like that if you're a pet owner. I'm not a pet owner. And so there are things like that that are really crazy and really out there, and they're physical products. They're not actual services, but if you find them helpful, maybe that's something you can sign up for. But as you can see, there are some that are really helpful. There are some that I think are crazy. 
but there are so many different types of subscriptions. And if you're signing up for five or 10 of these different ones, those five to $10 per month for those individual products can add up very quickly. And so while they're great for businesses, they can end up being very detrimental to your budget. And so just make sure you're keeping track of any subscriptions that you're signing up for. If you're signing up for any trials, make sure that if you don't plan on actually using the service or keeping it after that trial period, set a reminder on your calendar so you can remind yourself to cancel that subscription. And if you have multiple subscriptions that you don't really use at all, or you don't use them that often, then just make sure you're taking a look at your budget taking a look at your checking account or your savings account and your credit cards to make sure you're not paying for something that you're not really using. And there are actual products and services that will actually help you track those. On some credit card websites, you can log in and you can actually see there's a section for checking on reoccurring payments. And so that way you can manually just check it yourself. There are services that you can pay for that will check it for you. You can use free apps like the Mint app or Personal Capital to look at expenses that you are constantly getting on a regular basis. And there's an app or website called Truebill, which will actually check it for you. And I actually plan on doing a review of their product, Truebill, and I'll have a link in the description below so you can check that out as well. But whatever you need to do to make sure you keep those subscriptions in check and make sure you're not falling for the subscription addiction, because subscriptions are definitely the new wave especially with software or anything that can be a service. And matter of fact, like I mentioned, pretty much any product now can be created into a subscription service. And so since subscriptions aren't going anywhere, you have to make sure that you keep those subscriptions in check and you're only signing up for things that you're actually gonna use. And if you're not using them anymore, make sure that you cancel those subscriptions so you're not wasting money on a regular basis automated every month. Because remember, they're not gonna cancel it for you unless your card happens to expire, then your card, whether it's your checking account or your credit card or your PayPal account, no matter what you use to pay for it, if it doesn't end on its own because of a cancellation or an expired card, they're gonna continue to charge you no matter if you use it every day or if you don't use it for the next three to five years. In fact, if you're in a fire community and you have automatic payments set up, you have it connected to an account that's constantly growing on its own via the stock market that actually pays for it, then it can literally last after you pass away. And so make sure you keep that in mind. And also I'd like to know what are your favorite subscription services? What are your favorite investments that provide subscription services? And also what's the worst subscription service you ever signed up for? And also what is the weirdest subscription service that you've either used or that you've seen? Just let us know those things in the comments below. Be sure to share with the rest of the Mobile Money Nation. And if you're not already a part of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I make a video just like this. Again, thanks Thanks for watching. Have a great day.